the history of the Christian faith, there are people who had one moving moment that set them on a radical departure from their life and an embracement of a new life and set them off on a course to salvation. And these are very moving uh, instances. Today we celebrate the conversion of a despised tax collector. Zacchaeus betrayed not only his people, but the very nature of his name, the meaning of the name Zacchaeus, which means pure. The Lord groups Zacchaeus with the harlots. He says, tax collectors and harlots will enter the kingdom of heaven before the religious people of the day, before the Pharisees. It was a critique in Matthew 21, 31 where he critiques the Pharisees, but he groups the magnitude of Zacchaeus' sinful lifestyle with, with harlots. Zacchaeus has an encounter with the Lord, and he does three things that sort of seal his conversion and lead to his salvation. What are these three things, and how can we as Christians today incorporate them? The first thing that he did when he was he was committed to not being one with the crowd. And the fathers of the church, they will often say that the crowd is synonymous with the world. To connect with Christ, to have an encounter, he positioned himself in a way where he could have contact with Christ. And that is exactly what, what the church tries to do for us. I don't know if many of us know this, but the word ecclesia means to be called out of, to be separated from the world. And so, in a way, what happened with Zacchaeus is what's happening to us who are in the church. We are gradually departing from the world, detaching from it. We have to be, we are, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And so, many times in our quest to not be one with the crowd, not be one with the crowd, we kind of look foolish especially during, during Holy Lent, where we are called to fast from meat and dairy and even oil, okay? And we are called to deepen our, our relationship with the Lord. We are positioning ourselves. We are positioning ourselves the way Zacchaeus did. And I often tell people that the church and the world think differently. That's why the processions go counterclockwise, because the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of the church are different. The church goes against the wisdom of the world. And so for us who are Christians, we have to be off a little bit. We have to be okay with being off, meaning that we have to be okay with uh, practicing a way of life that may seem strange to others or not make sense to others, but we are committed to them. And so not being one with the crowd. The second thing that Zacchaeus did, the second great thing that he did was he climbed the tree. And climbing the tree has has double meaning. Number one is a, is a theme of ascension. He set his sights higher, not on worldly things. He sort of detached himself from the world and its cares and materialism. And we see that by him giving away what he gained. Okay? But also, it's not just about ascending. It's also about placing ourselves on the tree. You see, symbolically, the tree is the wood of the cross. That is, the Lord put himself on the cross. We are called to put ourselves on the cross. And to understand that when we read Zacchaeus, when he read that, when we read, when we read that he climbed the tree, that something died. That something died when he climbed the tree. The old Adam, the old way of life. Our faith constantly asks for us to be willing to put ourselves on the cross to struggle, to even suffer, so we can reach our salvation. You know, I was reading the story, a, a letter of a spiritual father to uh, a spiritual daughter who was going to him for confession, and the father confessed her at one point, she's complaining this and that, at one point he says to her, why are you taking yourself off the cross? And many times we do that, we go through discomfort, and we don't see the redemptive value of what we're going through. Let us not take ourselves off the cross because through the wood, through the 
willingly, the willing part of us to climb the tree, we reach our salvation. We reach something beautiful. Let us kill off, like Zacchaeus did, the way of life, the particular aspects of our lives that hold us down. And lastly, Zacchaeus used his wealth rightly. He used his wealth rightly. God wants you to use your wealth to become rich. I know that sounds confusing because when we think of this, we think in worldly terms. But God thinks paradoxically. He thinks differently than the world. You see, God says, it's okay to be wealthy. It's okay for money to come into your hands. But you got to do something with it. You cannot just hold it and, and turn love inward and gather stuff. Okay? We are called to bring it out and share it with others. And in that way, paradoximally, we become rich. St. Maximus of Turin, a fourth century saint, when he speaks about Zacchaeus, he says a beautiful quote. He says, In giving out his money, he gave his wealth to himself, because what we possess is another's if we do not use it properly for salvation. For whatever seems to be mine will not be mine when I depart from this world, if it is kept from being useful in this world. Share the wealth. Share the wealth. Zacchaeus continues his journey, his conversion to sainthood. Many of us may not know this, but he is one of the apostles. He, he is an apostle of the church. He is a saint in our church. He went from being a despised tax collector to a saint. We celebrate him on April 20th. He had that one encounter and there was a total shift in direction in his life. And it's interesting because in our, in our liturgical life, in the life of the church, the gospel of Zacchaeus is positioned in, in a way where we're shifting our focus. Just as uh, prior to the Zacchaeus gospel, the focus is on the, the nativity and on the baptism of Christ and all these beautiful feast days. All of a sudden with the Zacchaeus gospel, the gospel of Zacchaeus, that reading is like a marker. Because in the church, we start focusing differently. We start focusing on Lent. Because Zacchaeus' gospel is always five weeks away from Holy and Great Lent, the beginning of Lent. So may this beautiful encounter with the Lord continue to inspire us. And may we climb the tree. And may we not be one with the crowd and use our wealth wisely so that God can bless us so that we can reach salvation the way Zacchaeus did. Amen.